Hi Elisa, uh, it's good to see you again. Last week you were in Egypt at the uh, at the pyramids at the at the Giza plateau, and I would love to ask you some questions about that. That is okay with you? Yes, feel very welcome. Okay, um, the pyramids are really special, and I was wondering um, who built them. And when? So there's all these um, sayings of it were the pharaohs or it was aliens or it was the Aninu Anaki. But when I look down to who built the pyramids in, in Egypt, they came just after the ice age, the last ice age we have on, on earth. So they came to help to recharge the energy around the world. Uh, if I look at the people who did it, uh, I will call it the people from Sirius. There is like Sirius A and Sirius B. And it is f for me when I feel the energy is the technology and the, where you can feel the heart system more. And those who have the technology side was the one who created the pyramids in, uh, in Egypt. Okay. And do you have any idea why? This, is it to stabilize? Is it to... It was to help recharge the world. It was to help the planet to uh, allow itself to grow once again. What happened were that on many other planets were... Many other planets was practiced as well. And it turned wrong on, the, on, on those planets. Um, so to save this planet and make Mother Earth save herself, we made these pyramids. We made the pyramids to recharge and align the energetic magnetic fields around the earth so the earth could breathe by itself. Um, so that was why we built them back then. And then the whole human evolu evolution? <laughs> evolution? Yeah, we know what I mean. Evolution? Evolution, yeah. yes. <laughs> came. And with that, that came this ego. And they got more and more disattached for the true self, more and more disattached for the oneness, which were serving a higher purpose at the time. But as the years and ages passed by, this higher purpose changed because the frequency on Earth is were getting lower and lower, and they were not in contact with nature. They were not in contact with the uh, magnet magnetic and energetic fields around the world. So therefore. If you do not pay attention to your flower, if you do not give your flower love and care, it will rotten, it will uh, listen. And this is the same for the whole world. So if you do not bring the love and the care for the world, if you do not bring the love and the care for the nature and for every little single stone, then the energy will be less and less. So it's exactly the same principle. Everything is energy. So the energy you bring to the world is what reflects back to you. If you disattach for everything in the world, then you are not serving each other. The energy is just going one way without having the interaction which cause expansion. And that's why we're here. All of us. Every single stone, every single human, every single frequency on this planet is here for expansion of the soul self. Mm -hmm. uh, if I understand well, it is also we who created it. Uh, uh, this, this, the pyramid, and uh, it's a combination of forces that created this pyramid. If I understand well, uh, yes and no. <laughs> That's my favorite answer always. Uh, yes, because. We were sent here um, with that purpose and when I look at we, we are many, we are many within one soul stream to do that job. If you look at the species who are on earth now, there were not, many of them were not linked to that time. Many of, many of them have no memories of when we went here. So in that way, they didn't build the pyramids. And therefore, it's also very logical they do not understand the underlying layers of that. And they can only link to what their perspective can link to, and that is basically the Faro uh, timeline. And some of our, um, our scientists 
are looking a little bit further back, but they do it from the three-dimensional perspective. So even though there is stuff they cannot explain by science, um, they don't dare to look further back. So. Uh, because there are more pyramids on the planet and um, yes. uh, and they are discovered still all the time. All Luckily. the time they discover all these new pyramids. Um, all pyramids. <laughs> all pyramids, you say. And, and also we were in Bosnia about a month and a half ago. Are all these pyramids linked to each other? Yes. Can you explain? Well, to, uh, it is a little bit like the star system. So when we wanted to align the, the planets towards each other, it is also functioned uh, with help of each other. That can't be one thing without the other. If you move away Earth, there's unbalance within the whole solar system. So it's actually the same on Earth. So when we have the pyramids placed, which is energetically and magnetic alignment with the star system, it, uh, it has to be oneness to provide the energy and the breath of the earth which they were created for. Um, I don't remember your question, but I think I answered it. Yes, my okay. question was if they are all linked together. And uh, then the answer is yes. And the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. Um, then also the pyramids are very much linked uh, not only to the pharaohs, but also to Isis. Um, can you explain who was Isis? Was it a person? Was it an energy? Who was she? Everything. And in everything I mean she were incarnated as a person. And she was also an uh, incarnation of a pure energy form. That energy form had, had not walked on this planet that pure before because for a reason, because that high energy on this planet was not meant to be within the publicity. So she was here in this pure energy form, somebody would call it female, but when I look into it, it's just in alignment. It's just pure source energy with female expression, but you need to have the masculine side inside of it as well in balance, so it become oneness. Um, her message were that people has to follow their heart. They have to have the self, have to have the pure connection all the way through. And how to let go of all the suffering. So when I look in, in the perspective where she look all, all out over all the people, she could not understand why people choose to stay within suffering. She could not understand why they choose to be within these patterns when it will take them a split of a die to let it burn. So her being on earth was actually to let people's ego burn and to show them the love from inside of themselves. So when you look into her eyes, it feels like your heart starts burning because everything which is unpure within you, you now feel. And that energy was very intense then, it is still very intense now and people for many, many centuries were not ready for that energy on this planet. But the times is changing so fast and it is time to reincarnate that energy. Not only because she needs to be here in expression and energetic form, but also because the people are ready to develop themselves. They have to develop themselves. The energy on the planet now where the pyramids will be reactivated once again, will raise so far and so fast that everything within us will eventually burn one way or another either way and we have a choice we always have the choice of free will so we can choose if we want to stay within suffering if we want to stay within the three dimensional world without developing from here but it will not be an easy journey in this time because when the frequency is so high everything with its lower frequency will feel even more hard so it will be having resistance upon yourself and about the whole evolution of the planet. So her being and her energetic expression is so important in this time. And it's so important that we take it in and we allow ourselves to be brave and follow our hearts. Even though that the road can be difficult or 
transformation phases can feel heavy and never-ending, but it's a part of our evolution, not only as a human being or as an angel alien walking world, but also in the collective, in helping our whole planet develop from where we were to where we are and where we later will become. I see. It, it also reminds me in other cultures about um, this type of energy like uh, Guan Yin or Mother Mary or the, the Magdalene or is that, is it, are we talking about the same energy? <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> My favorite answer. So the energetic line from, from Isis, Magdalene, uh, Mary Magdalena and this uh, way up is actually the same line. But if you look into Maria Magdalena's energy, she had more earthly boundaries. She was more in this caring and also in the feeling of suffering to show her expression and to show her vulnerability and her motherhood. So she was more linked to earth, where Isis' energy were not really linked to earth. It was more coming from the outside, standing on earth to show the earth, the possibility which there are and which we can bring upon this earth. Um, so the female softness is the same. And from Maria Magdalena, um, it is much more the female side. It's, she had to link to some kind of uh, sorrow feeling also to be able to reach the people in that time. Sarah, Sarah her child, had the same frequency as uh, Isis, but she was not allowed to shine as much as Isis because it was not the time. So in one way, it is the same energy line, it's the same uh, message. Follow your heart, be true to yourself, uh, set yourself free, and uh, the amount of free will at every time. In every dimension, always. Yeah? But um, the time of her fully appearance in energetic form has not been until now, since the day she was on Earth the first time. Okay, and Guan Yin? Um, Quan Yin actually has another energetic form, funny you ask. <laughs> when I look into uh, her, it is also strong energy, it is also sort of the same appearance as Isis, only um, the color in her imprint is different and there's more fire in her imprint as well. So. Her expression were, yeah, how do I explain this? Mm -hmm. Human words. Okay, so if I go in and feel how it is to be Kuan Yin, then she had the over overview, she had soft words to give to the people. She did not take the people in, but her female energy was shining a lot through. And, and the softness um, really show her movements in her frequencies, when she speaks, when she moves, when she appears. If I go into the feeling of Isis, it is really powerful, like poof, I am here, I'm just shining. If you come near me, everything within you, which is not clear, will burn from a pure perspective. Not from a, a, um, that she wants to burn people, but because it is just pure light shining out which will show you everything inside which is not pure so if i look to the canyon it's more soft it's more you can talk with it you can have a conversation and softly it will eventually land inside of you in a gentle way and if you go into isis it's more like Poof, here we are <laughs> everything or nothing um so so the expression, energetic expression in our three-dimensional world is different. And if I look at where they come from, actually everything is light, but it is also not the same string line. That's a little bit funny, but they of course have the same mission on Earth. You already explained a bit um, 
Isis when she when she lived and her role then and now and that it's um, what if I understand well it's um, that now is the time especially for this energy to come back on earth yes can you explain why now um. The human race choose to walk through uh, very hard times. They choose to walk through this ego evolution in order of um, in order of, of expanding the soul perspective within these lower frequencies. Because you can learn a lot through anger and hate and sorrow and war and stuff like that. It's amazing how much develop that could cost. But over time. Um, it took them so much away from the oneness and so much away from the uh, alignment that the energetic uh, generation um, became less than what were expected. So in this time, if you bring down this light, they were not ready for it. If you bring down so powerful light in a crisis of wars, um, where that is the meaning. It is not the place and that will just start burning people without a purpose. So now, so therefore that is also one of the reasons why we have had to still have all these light workers all the way through there have been light workers to help light the planet, but they have to be more soft. They have to be more linked to the time and the age which they were sent here to. So now when everything is developing, evolving so fast, because it has to, um, we need some certain wake-up calls and when people have been sleeping for centuries <laughs> we need some more powerful poof here we are here's the key just walk in and see what you're gonna do with it because we also have all these light workers here and and they are feeling lost they're feeling seeking they don't feel that they belong on earth they don't know where they belong they don't know who they can relate to because everything doesn't fit their energy but when you bring down this light from let's call it outer space they feel home they understand they are being understood they're being seen so that will bring them peace enough inside to work on the self to set them free to do what they were sent here to do um, so that is one of the main reasons why now is the time and because and because we just decided this very long time ago. Mm, it was on the agenda. It was definitely so on the agenda. <laughs> and then um, going back to the pyramids, the pyramids are helping with this pro with this process. Definitely, definitely. It is. Uh, you can look at it in two ways. You can look at it as one big love relationship, or if you are not so much into the feelings, you can look at it as a machine. So this machine has to breathe, this machine has to be feeding and for that to breathe you need to activate it. Um, if you look at it from a love perspective, everything is love, everything is light and nothing functions if it is not oneness. If you have a child um, and you don't link to your child, then you two don't understand each other. So it can cry but you don't know it's hungry. So then this whole miscomplication will make the child sick because it doesn't get any food. And this is exactly the same with the parents. So if you love them, if you talk with them, if you feel them and listen to their story, if you show them your motherhood you're caring, they will show it back to you and together you can breathe in the same breath and create this oneness which we actually come from and we are meant to re... Um, reconnect with within this life on this planet not oneness in the fake form and i always keep saying that it's not that we all have to be the same i don't have to be this plant but i have to love it with all my heart as it loves me so we can communicate so i can do what i was sent here for and that can do what that is sent here for and that is true oneness then we can make this whole planet function without the control without all these weird matrix patterns we've been walking around in for centuries because then everything is one we connect to each other and if you kill an animal for example you have an agreement with this animal 
you have gone into that now we become one in a different form. It is exactly like killing a plant. Everything has feelings, everything has life. The stones of the pyramids, I love them so much. I, I felt them so deep in my heart that I just wanted... I know I don't have that big arms, but I wanted to hug <laughs> the whole pyramid and just hold it close and tell me tell it how much I loved it and how sorry I feel that it has not been seen because there's so much value, so much knowledge within those stones and we have not paid attention or respect or care enough for them for centuries so I just wanted to bring all the love that I have as it is, it is here to bring that love for us it's all about seeing the true heart and beauty within everything and everyone. It doesn't matter if it's a plant, an animal, a stone. Everything is love and everything deserves love and respect. I see. And especially over there at, at, um, at the Giza Plateau, um, I remember seeing you looking at these pyramids and you especially felt very attracted to the one in the middle. Yeah. The cat. I call her cat tree. Why? I just love her. <laughs> so if you, if you see the tree pyramids, and this is a typical thing, then there's the big one, the middle one, and the small one. And they say that the king chambers is in the big one, right? So all the attention goes to the big one. And then the small one, there is an open chamber, so there's a lot of attention there as well. But the middle one has been closed up for a long time, so the attention is really... People are not treating it that well, let's say it like that. Um, so immediately, already there, I felt her feelings. That she was not being seen and appreciating for what she is. And all her power, because it's like three powerhouses with different frequencies. And all of her power have been kept in for so long. It has been suppressed and you can of course link it to the whole female thing through the last 2000 years that we have been suppressing ourselves and allowing that because it was a part of the time. But now it's the time to let that go. And exactly in that um, perspective, it is for her time to send out her energy and start breathing again. Not that she has to overpower it all and the other pyramid doesn't matter. No, we are not in some kind of female evolution. We are in the time of oneness. So she needs to break free. And to break free, she needs to be connected with the child and the husband. Let's put it like that. So they, as one big family, can make everything grow. And then she is truly free. Because then it's oneness. So you really see it, the three pyramids as she in the middle, the female one, the male one, the big one, and the child, the smaller one. Well, yes and no. <laughs> so in one perspective, this is how I will explain it. In another perspective, it's just because the energetic form is, is different. Uh, and the little one have, have, a deep, um, have a deep energy, but it's not breathing that well. The big one have a more open energy, like phew, this is why everybody feels, especially if they have lower frequency within themselves, but they will go and walk into the big pyramid and be like, oh my god, this is the greatest energy ever, right? But, <laughs> but when you have that energy, it doesn't have grounding, it doesn't have substance, it's just like, phew, you know? So when you then take her in the middle, it's like the breathing heart, but it's locked up, so you can't feel it unless you go there, allow yourself to feel through the layers on the outside and feel the breathing heart inside. So in one way that would be the heart. <laughs> and then we have the sun and the moon. And then that is how it's connected. You could definitely see all these layers, especially yes. on the middle one. Um, I, I'm just thinking, it, does it have any link, these three pyramids, with the Isis, Osiris, and Horus meaning? Um, everything on this planet is being explained it in, this, in symbols. Symbolism. We love symbolism. And also to bring us closer to understanding. And still not too close because people were very afraid of that. So I would say yes in one perspective. 
And it is also the same story with Maria Magdalena, Jesus and that part of religion. So what happens is <laughs> first we make one incarnation and want to bring the knowledge to the people. Do they listen? No, fine. So what do we do? We do second generation. We do it more softly this time. We do them more human, but still we send him, them here as light beings, right? Do the people listen? No, they did not listen. So what do we do? We send the second, the third one. And um, after a while, it was like letting them have this long period without these big uh, lights here and um, so they had time to really uh, evolve themselves and they became all technology alike and more and more farther away from the truth and created these religions where <laughs> where every religion have a very beautiful part of truth every religion is created out of beauty knowledge memories of what once were and to remind us that we are all one, we are all connected, everything starts from the heart and the angels on earth is very true as well. The God is true, all of us is the God, we are soul streams from God. And what happened were that man had an ego. Man rewrite this book over and over and over in different countries, in different timelines. So then we got a lot of religions fighting each other over the same story. So what were created in the heartness, in, in a goodwill for reminding us uh, who we are, were us now turned into a religion weapon to break us down. And that hurt us a lot. And so it's time to allow the people to wake up. We cannot do it with <laughs> we're trying to fight them, say, no, your religion is bad and your religion is bad. No, fire with fire is not working. We can only bring our love and our light and our knowledge by um, appealing, appealing, I guess that is, is that a word? <laughs> it is a word. Great. By appealing to a people going to listen to their heart. Appealing to, they seek inside of themselves, give themselves the peace and the time to let go of all the beliefs, just for a split second, you know? All the religions, everything they were ever told, what their mom learned them, what the dad learned them, what they learned through school, all around them. Just give them that little time of silence to feel what is actually real for me. What is actually my own beliefs, not what I was taught, not what was standing within whatever book, not what I have been raised or beaten to believe, but what feels right, what feels bright, what makes my heart feel like opening up, and what makes my heart and myself feel like closing down or have to do something like having handcuffs on. If you have to do, and the feeling is having handcuffs on, it is not God's will. If you have our heart mission on earth, even it's hard, you will feel I have to go this way. I want to walk this way. Hmm. Um, is, is there a connection with Atlantis? <laughs> Atlantis was definitely created out of energetic layers and it was also created, we had these pyramids surrounding and we have these um, energetic lines which kept Atlantis flowing at that time um, and we had a lot of light workers living there because it reminded them on their own planet, they created their own little alien bubble <laughs> on earth and people had a lot of connection to the higher self and knew and remember how to use these energies to create stuff on earth. It was very good for the time, but they could not handle the ego. And even our Atlantis people, which was mixed up with some of the ego expressions, all of a sudden could feel this power 
and they were not able or capable of controlling that. So it was a beautiful, beautiful place and it had a beautiful, beautiful purpose. And what once were will once again remain. Um, thinking about Atlantis also um, comes up the connection with the crystals, with the whole crystal energy, the crystal world. Um, uh, and it also made me think about when, when we went into the pyramid, uh, they were very specific about no meditation, <laughs> no crystals. So what is your idea about that? So there is two questions within your questions. Let me take the first one. So every crystal remains a lot of energy, a lot of high frequency, a lot of memories. So every crystal has a lot of power within this world reality. As more we connect to it, as more we can help it regenerate this power. These stones are so intelligent <laughs> that if they don't want to be with you anymore, they just let you drop it. They, they send a thought into your head telling you, leave me. So without you thinking about it, you are doing it. They are so intelligent. They connect with you on a whole other level. So crystals also help this planet breathe. Crystal helps uh, people, animal, nature, everything within changing their frequencies. Um, so back to the pyramids. Pyramids was built for this higher purpose. Then we have the pharaoh time, we have the time where we got disconnected from the first truth and made it into a second truth. And after that, we had the religion uh, separations who were afraid of each other. So what we do is we bring this illusion of fear. I fear you fearing him because that religion will kill that religion. And actually it's all built of fear. If we all could let go of fear, it would be a lot easier. So, if you look at it from one perspective, then they are afraid to bring back the energy, the knowledge and the memory of the place so the place can regenerate itself and grow within the power it was meant to. Because that will show that the suppression around the place in this time is not real, it's an illusion. And therefore it will take power away from the people who have the power at this moment. What we do when we have these powerful people is that we go to um, like the police and stuff like that. We give them this illusion of them having power. We tell them that you have to protect the people. So if something happened here four years ago, you have to protect the people. And the way we protect the people is bringing fear, bringing control and bringing security, but made out of ego and fear. And when that is energy sending out, then that is what's darkening the place. So I do believe that those who say no meditation is allowed, think they're doing you a favor. I do believe that the people there wish more people to come. They wish us all to be together, actually. I don't see any, I didn't see anybody look at me with wrong eyes. I saw them look at me with fear, confusion, a lot of uh, attention, of course. <laughs> um, and so mixed feelings from what they feel, the world they live in and what they see appearing all of a sudden this close up. But I did not see evil. I, and, and that is what confuses people because all these layers we feel is what we send out. So when they say, welcome to Egypt, we feel like, oh shit, no, I wanna go home. But what they want to do is tell you, really welcome, I wish tourists to come. I wish this place to develop, because then I can develop. But because they are so suppressed within the matrix worlds and haven't been, uh, have the option to go out of this matrix to realize that this is not necessarily how the world is, they don't know how to express themselves. They don't know how to emotionally link to saying, welcome my dear, I love you being here. But I do believe and I do see that that is what they want and that is their wish. But they don't know how to set themselves free yet. So the only thing we can do, all of us, is when we go somewhere, allow ourselves to be who we are. 
allow ourselves to shine out the light that we are. Of course, we have to respect people's religions, people's beliefs, and whatever matrix world they want to live in. But we are not sent here to suppress ourselves. We are not sent here to walk into a matrix to become part of that matrix. We are sent here to be the example of how it feels to be free. Not by having an ego perspective say, well, server do that and I can walk however I want or something like that. No, by being humble, but being true and real to ourselves. And also, um, did you answer the question about the crystals? Why they didn't want the, the crystals in? Yes. Was it also because of the fear? Yeah, if you, um, if you look at it from a higher perspective, and not because many humans in the first three to four layers are not aware of what they're doing. They think they are serving the, they, from their perspective, they're doing their very best job to help the people of the country, of the family, stuff like that. So you have to look higher than that. So if you look higher than that, <laughs> then it is, if you bring the crystals, if you bring the tension, the meditation back to the pyramids, they start breathing all by themselves. They start bringing this attention to the power. So that takes the power away from the power who want to suppress the people and bring this back to its true uh, perspective of energy from earth perspective and higher self. So then it's harder for the bad guys <laughs> to keep the matrix, their suppressed people, their allow them to grow within their role. And therefore, if you take the power station and we call Egypt the power station and take all the attention, all the stones away, make people feel confused, only allowed to take pictures, no time to breathe, then maybe it will never be reset. Maybe we can keep controlling the way we always were. Um, where does the water come in? What, is, what function is the water? I'm thinking about the Nile River, who once uh, came up to the pyramids uh, and there so was a beautiful season. time. Yeah. So water of all have the highest consciousness. Water have the, the opportunity to flow everywhere. Everything is water. There's water within you. There's water within the plants. are watered in everything. So water can resonate with water within everything. So water's memory and water's frequency is very, very strong. And those water lines, ley lines, I think you call them, have been connected all over the earth. And to make nature grow, you need water. And especially a place like the desert. <laughs> um, so the Nile had a lot of pureness, a lot of knowledge, a lot of memories. And once when everything was a light bend, then the Nile and the water was flowing exactly how it was meant to flow all over the world. As you disconnect the pyramids, as you disconnect these memories and uh, energetic lines, um, the water will start flowing in another way. Because the water is also a symbolism of the energetic flow, like the energetic flow in you. If you have uh, thick legs or something, it is also caused by, you know, the water in your legs. It's also caused by a non energetic flow within your physical self. So everything is like that. Everything is a breathing heart. Everything is a working machine, if you want to see it that way. So for the world to breathe how it was meant to, the ley lines have to be reconnected, as the, as the pyramids will be reconnected. And it's exactly the same inside of you. When you clean yourself, all your chakras have to be reconnected. You have to be reconnected to your heart, reconnected to your lower chakra. Let go of whatever is not serving you. So everything, once again, will breathe in alignment with any physical self. I see. Is, is, um, is also this, uh, coming back to this water, is it necessary for the pyramids to function uh, fully? Is it necessary to have the water flowing underneath the pyramids to function fully? 
No. <laughs> no, because everything is energy. If you resonate with the pyramids, again, I'm stepping out of this world's reality. So we have the three dynamics in the world reality. Here we don't really... If you only look at that perspective, yes, it will be necessary. If you then go up to like the five, six, seven, up to eight dimension. Um, weird number. <laughs> then you can energetic align the places. You just have to put the memory from one to another into each other so it is reconnected. And then that reconnection will create the frequency and the vibration on earth that will recharge the place so eventually the Nile, for example, will start running by itself exactly how it was meant to. So it doesn't matter what comes first, it's like the chicken and the egg thingy, same principle. <laughs> um, it just have to become oneness and then everything will flow. I see. I was wondering also because there are so many, um, so many other pyramids uh, along the Nile River and so many other temples. And one of them also is um, the Isis Temple uh, on the Philae Island. Um, can you say something about that? It came later. <laughs> um, it was built. In the time of, of Isis would build a temple, but the temple which now remains is uh, memories, it's appreciating of the expression which she had. And you can, you can um, compare it a bit with the Buddhist temples. Um, and it's there to bring the love, the memories, the energy around that temple is so much more nice than the energy around the pyramids because they're not so afraid of that. It's more like some kind of church but without a religion where you have to do the prayers and stuff like that. There's a lot of memories within the stones within that temple as well. A lot of generations have passed by. Um, if you look at the hard times, there's not so much Actually, not so much memory of the hard times there. I can see it passing by and I can feel uh, like the war and there's been some blood of the walls and stuff like that. There have been some serious sandstorms over the centuries. Um, but the, the frequency which remains there is very light and bright. So the energy people bring there when they go there is this light, bright, happy feeling uh, most of the time. So that is the energetic expression which still remains within the stones. And the, 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 this temple has been, um, re has been replaced, it, it yes. has been taken moved, apart moved and it. moved uh, to, to just a few hundred meters uh, away. Did that change the energy in the stones also? Yes. Well, the stones still have the memory of where it once were. Uh, if you look at where it once were, and look at, feel the stones which is still there underneath the ground. Then it has the roof, then it has more like this power portal feeling and that scares people. It scared them because they could feel it when they entered that place. It was an opening but it also like drove them down a bit. By moving it, they, they cut off the connection to that feeling of a portal. So then it's just light and bright and a little more, you know, like when you walk into a hotel and it's just really nice. <laughs> it gives you more that feeling than the feeling of the old memories. Um, but the stone still remains, the stones still have the consciousness which they once had. Um, but, but the deep and the, um, the spiral feeling is no longer within the consciousness after it was moved it is still on the place where it once were. Mm. Yeah. And then there's another connection I would like to ask you. Um, before the pyramids, there's the Sphinx. And um, the, it, it, it is said that the Sphinx is much, is much older than the pyramids are. Can you say something about that? <sighs> Well, it is not my feeling. 
it is my feeling that the swings came after. If I look into the pyramids, pyramids have one pur purpose. If I look into the swings, um, it serves another purpose. And uh, this big head thing, is that what you call the swings? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, there's something underneath the ground. <laughs> That's one thing. But the big head thing, if I go into the memory of that stone and I look in out of the stone's eyes, I see the time of Rome. I see the time of the war when the war were between Rome and the Egypt people, maybe. Um, I see all the blood running around and all this ego thing going on and a lot, a lot of energy were exposed and expand and uh, like this whole battlefield um, where of course we have to have the bad guys that were like the Napoleon guys standing somewhere also um, <laughs> maybe the another war, there have been a couple of wars um, there have actually been a couple of wars, this was the later war so yeah um, so there was a lot of this masculine energy, there was a lot of this fighting, a lot of it is anger, but it was meant to be, it was meant to run through those perspectives. So if I look into that, it is not linked together with the pyramids. If I look into what is underneath the ground, that is more linked to the pyramids because that is linked to the center of the earth and the whole breathing process. But if I look into the uh, head, then that is the memory which is still remain within the stones. Mm, I see. That is what what is uh, what is thought also that underneath the Sphinx is more. It is more important than what is uh, the visible part. What is underneath the Sphinx is more. <laughs> it's deeper. That is old. That part is old. That part is linked to this whole concept of uh, alien contact. <laughs> but aliens is just like we. So. For me it's funny to call it aliens, but that is more linked to the time around the time age, the ice age just around that. Actually some of the swings around the world were made before the ice age because it's centered inside of the world. Earth, not all the way in the earth, but so the, the time the ice age didn't touch it. Where the, the top of the head <laughs> was made later. So you can call it kind of a disguise as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. If, if I was thinking about your remark you, you just made uh, about being alien and um, and basically we are all alien. And that yes. is part also <laughs> of the duality that has been created in, in, in my idea that um, alien is something very different than human. It is not at all. We are all one. And you, it's just different species. And in this time there's so many different layers and species incarnated. So to be all scared about aliens, there's absolutely no reason. Of course there's different layers of aliens, of course there's different expression, just like humans. You know, some humans are afraid of other humans for whatever reason within the three-dimensional world which will make sense to them. But it is exactly the same for aliens. So if there's one race of aliens that have an energy which influences you in a bad way, doesn't mean that all aliens is like that. So it is just like the flowers, it's just like the stones, we are all one. And in the same time, we all have our own self because this is the only way which we can expand soul perspective and generate the energetic um, <laughs> breathing we want to generate around our whole solar system. Mm, I see. Also there is oneness. Yes. Is the oneness. I, I was, I, was um, I think we are nearing a bit the end of the interview. Um, what struck me was that we were there, you were there, uh, exactly in the week of the um, Islamic New Year. Yes, that was uh, hilarious. With all, the, um, with all the festivities, but also with all these animals that, that were Killed. sacrificed, yes. uh, which is part um, 
part of the of the religion, the offerings, and um, how was that for you? Um, so I felt it in two ways. One way where I do do not feel that it is to appreciate an animal to kill it in that big amount for a reason which is caused by religion. God never told us to sacrifice animals. He told us to be one. He told us to, if you, if you kill the animal, you become one with the animal. So you didn't kill it, you just become one with the entity. You know, you have a, this um, agreement of, of a reconnection, right? So my feeling of the whole suffering or, yeah, suffering uh, phase, offering phase, it's not something which feels good within my system. If I looked at it and I saw how the blood was flow overflowing all the village, uh, I had two things. One thing is, the second the animal is dead, there's no longer no soul there. So for me, I could see the frequency flowing and the energetic flow uh, and the last memory within their feeling systems, but it do not hurt me because I can feel that the soul is not there. So therefore, I feel sort of okay. <laughs> but in, on the other hand, you, we come here and because it is that barbaric, you know, we can see the blood and the, the inside is running down the street and it's really a horrible uh, sight if, if you link to the three dimensional world, which I of course have trouble with. <laughs> and it makes me think, well, so what do we do in every other country? We do it behind the locked doors, but we do it one million times as much. And for what? Not for our gods. No, for money. For production. For keeping to feed people who just eat it and become sick. Because it's not in our So in one way I actually love, I, I truly love that they sacrifice these animals and they let the blood overflow the streets to let people feel what actually is going on. Because as long as you lock it up and you just get this little sweet packet of meat, you don't care about the process. You don't see what actually is going on. So I'm very thankful for them giving people this impression. Because then we have our opportunity to wake a little bit up, see what it is we do to each other. For me, there's no difference between killing an animal or killing, a, you know, when you eat salad, you sort of kill that too. The only thing is just the, the, the frequencies within the salad and the emotional memories is less, but the frequency has easy, it's easier for the frequency within the salad to um, reconnect and become aligned with a new physical self because those agreements we made a long time ago which if you take the animal the whole emotional system is stuck within a whole other pattern and if you kill it from a perspective where it's uh, just for the money then that that fear and that disconnection stays within the animal so when you eat the animal you you the frequencies from that animal you can actually feel within your own system. So even though you're getting the proteins you need and stuff like that, you're also receiving these suppressed feelings from the animal when it once were alive. And that is not an alignment. I want to bring something I want to say. So to take some of the fear away from each other, let me put it this way. We were there at the feast, there were three days where there was only Egypt people. The police were so scared, um, keeping an eye on me all the time. And I chose one of the days to just take whatever dress I wanted on and run around in my bare feet as the only, one of the only European people amongst all these Egypt people. Did I get into attention? A lot of attention. Did anybody even try one millimeter to harm me? No. Did anybody disrespect me in a form where I felt threatened? No. Maybe the police were a little bit aggressive. But 
everybody did it out from a perspective of not knowing, wanting to show the best side of themselves, and at the same time, there come this creature they have never seen before, and they have this whole matrix way of treating it. They just keep repeating the same sentence over and over again. It's a system. It is not how the people is. So should we be afraid of Egypt? No. Should we be afraid of each other? No. We should bring the what we are to show each other this is possible. I made beautiful souls. I made a lot of stuck people within system, within matrix, and I accept it. It's theirs. But let's not support the fear. Let's not support the anger, but bring the love that we are. Thank you. That's a beautiful message. You're very welcome.